I had a birthday over the weekend and you're gonna to get to see all the different families that visited, the wonderful times we had. And I do wanna thank you for all your wishes. A lot of you wish me happy birthday. And it was an absolutely grand day. We did it very safely with masks and social distancing. And we uh, had one family at a time. We kind of timed it. It worked out great. And so much joy to my heart with all the visits. The other topic we're going to do is we're going to start talking about Thanksgiving. Moose and I, I think he's on his way out, are going to discuss some of our Thanksgivings from years and years ago. We have lived in various places and especially had some Thanksgivings that were, I would say, memorable for a lot of reasons. But let me get Moose and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Look how cute your sweater is. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> How old are you? 83 years. birthday donut. Micah, you have the matches. Isn't that cute? <laughs> are we going to light it? Sure. I got to put this down. Okay. Thank Is you. The right I had the most wonderful birthday on Saturday, November 14th. We decided that we were only going to have one family at a time visit and everyone was wearing masks. We were going to be outside and I didn't put any pressure on anyone, but they did decide that they were going to come up, bring all the kids and we could catch up and have a wonderful conversation. I got so many wonderful, cute presents, wonderful, beautiful presents. The dogs were there, the sun was shining and it was absolutely wonderful. The first family to arrive, and they only had to come down 300 feet from the big house because we live in a nanny pod on their property, was our youngest daughter, her husband, and the three teenagers. The kids caught up on everything they'd been doing. We listened to them and it was so wonderful to talk to the children again. It was great. Breakfast burrito! Woohoo! Looking forward to it. Here comes my Debbie. Hello! With my birthday see. breakfast. Boy, <laughs> present. <laughs> hey, how, you, how are you? Oh, very, very <laughs> Thank you. Feel Thank you. This is so exciting seeing everybody. <laughs> Look at that, Moosey. Look. Oh, my. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It's beautiful. And a matching, Whoa, a matching shawl. shawl. Yep. Oh, my gosh. You'll be set Is for the this holidays. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I can put my iPad in here. Oh, good. Yeah, this is wonderful for the iPad. Let While we were celebrating, our three great-granddaughters who were camping with their daddy and Catalina on a Indian Princess Girl Scout weekend called and sang happy birthday on the phone, and it was so, so sweet. Those girls are just darling. From Moosey, this is a Toby mug called The Gardener. And Moosey broke one of my Toby mugs two months ago. Moosey. And he knows what I love. And because we garden, isn't this a cute one? Yep. Ah, thank Good you. Good job, Moosey. Moosey. Love you. you love you. It's a cute one. On the day before my birthday, our daughter Margie and I spent the day together making 
bags, and she presented me with my wonderful birthday present. Thank you so much for my flowers. Is there a pretty blue one in there, did you say? Yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you for coming to see me too. I love you guys. Love you. And last, but definitely not least, came Matthew and Cindy and their three teenage kids. Except for little Dolly, not quite a teenager yet. If we only didn't have all these masks on, you could see all the wonderful smiles and the happiness and the joy. I'm sure you can see it. But it was such a wonderful day. The only child of ours that we didn't see was Bill, Billy, who, who was up in Idaho, of course, but he called and we had so many telephone calls from all the other grandkids. It was a wonderful, day and I am so thankful to the Lord. I have been so blessed to have all these wonderful children and of course my Moosey. Sing happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. my sweet grandkids. I haven't seen you guys in so long. I was telling our friends that we're going to be doing some chit-chatting about some of our <clears throat> past Thanksgivings. I have one that goes back to the 40s that I'd like to talk about, uh, a Thanksgiving day. How about you? I have one that goes to the 1960. Okay, then I go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was a good one. When I was probably nine or 10, my brother was two years younger. I have another brother, but he wasn't born yet. We lived in Bloomfield, New Jersey. And we lived on a dead end street that um, ended at a canal. We called it a canal in those days. It was a combination of woods, a lot of woods, acres, oh, hundreds of acres of woods, and um, a little brook as you went a canal, what's the connotation of canal? Is it something that you go down into? Yeah, it was. Well, that's that's what this was. You had to go down a path, mm -hmm. and then um, there was a bridle path in this canal. And then on the other side of the bridle path, where people would actually ride horses through there, were, were woods. And down in there, uh, we were never supposed to go down there. We did venture with our friends down once in a while. We never really ever saw anybody. But this Thanksgiving day, the day started with a hike. We always, my dad always took us on a, a nice little hike. And um, the turkey was cooking and everything smelled great. 
and I guess we ate about two o'clock in the afternoon. We had a good friend that was visiting us. She was actually a sort of a grandmother housekeeper. And she was in the kitchen and um, she walked into the dining room and she said, there's someone at the back door, come and see. My mother got up and she was gone for about five minutes and she came back to the table and she said, we have uh, an unexpected visitor that, that he will be having a Thanksgiving dinner with us with all the trimmings. He won't be with us in here. However, he'll be eating in the kitchen and he'll be enjoying the meal. So everyone at the table said, well, who is he? She said, well, he was someone who came up from the canal and smelled this wonderful smell coming from a, our house. And he was hungry. And he was a drifter. I think that's what we might have called a drifter, a that's vagabond. That's a polite name today, yeah. It is a polite name today. Um, so we sat there, our love Jemu, we sat there, had our dinner and enjoyed it immensely. And our drifter friend had the same meal in the kitchen. And then afterward, thanked, we never actually see him. I thought we, if I remember, I kind of remember peeking around the corner because I was so curious. And so when we finished our meal and we were excused from the table, my brother and I went in and we sort of peeked into the kitchen and we saw this older man, not too old, tipping a hat to the housekeeper and to my mother and thanking them so much, such a, a, a kind looking man. And out the back door, he went. Well, we were fascinated with this. We, we were wondering where he came from. In those days, um, the drifters were always on the move, it seemed. That's why the, the, in those days, they, they used a, a vagabond name or whatever. Um, we even wondered if this wasn't Jesus. Now, my mother, I think, did start a conversation, perhaps to make the visit um, a learning experience of kindness. And perhaps it could have been Jesus just stopping in. And my mother said that she was so glad she decided to let him have a meal. Well, that was kindness. But that same family um, moved and had a Thanksgiving in 1959. And I had come home from the army with the sole purpose. <laughs> oh, you kept that one from me. You, he didn't tell me he was going to talk about this one. A sole, pur a sole purpose of proposing to you. Yes. <laughs> which I did. I, you, I was taking you home after I proposed. And it was Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> and you sat down at the table with all the people, your mother and father and the uncles and aunts, and you told my mother, your mother, my mother, that you were going to marry me. And she went ballistic. Berserk. Well, I have yeah. to tell you, it's not that she didn't like most. Well, it was my I father, too. I think it too. might have been something about the turkey that she didn't agree with her? <laughs> no, I, actually, I announced it to both my mother and father at the same time. Um, I was known as, as slightly fickle, as my mother used to call me. Um, <laughs> I did enjoy my dating days and um, sort of thought every boy I met or dated might have been the one. Um, and of course he wasn't until this guy came around. But she just wanted to make sure that I knew my own mind. It wasn't that she didn't love Moose 
or my dad didn't love. They just wanted me. It was a surprise, you see. Um, nowadays, when people decide to get married, they've discussed it. They've picked out the ring together. They decide when they're going to get engaged. Moose was in the army. We dated for a summer. Obviously, we fell in love. But I wrote him letters every day, and, and he came home from Fort Knox, Kentucky. And I thought we'd have a nice holiday together, and life would go on for a little bit longer. Well, you and had... You, it didn't. You had your idea of what a Thanksgiving was, and I had my idea of what it was. I guess that you You did. would say yes, and you did. And I did. <laughs> so we got engaged on that Thanksgiving. Well, okay. But there's an, there's another Thanksgiving that we had, speaking of the military. Um, it, it, it's an interesting statistic. At Fort Knox, there were 30,000 military people there. 30,000. I had no idea there were that many. Uh, on, the, on the post? Yeah. And on Christmas and Thanksgiving, but particularly Thanksgiving, Every soldier, sailor, whatever, in the hall, all the armies and navies, get a turkey's dinner. Mm. Now, wait a minute. Think about that for a second. How many darn turkeys gave up their life for the service? I mean, 30,000 just in one post you mean all they, over the world. They gave them to them in, in their home? No, in the mess hall. Oh. So I have a picture of it somewhere where uh, you and I were there, and well, I mean, we didn't need a whole turkey by ourselves. No one did. They had to share it with the other guys. Of course, <laughs> All right? Mm. I thought you said every soldier got one turkey dinner. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's different. And it was a f everything soup to nuts, and the the sergeants, particularly the sergeants. Because their wives were invited, um, decorated the place. Oh. My mess hall. <laughs> yeah. You know, with crepe. Crepe paper Great and paper. all around. I remember that. And everything that you wanted in a turkey dinner was there for the guys to enjoy, and they did. They looked forward to it. Do you think we have a picture of something that we can dig up to, yeah, to put yeah, on the video? Yeah, yeah. That would be fun. Okay. That would be fun. So it would be. Okay, I'm thinking of another Thanksgiving. Um, Go ahead. Well, when, when we were, we didn't live very long uh, back home in New Jersey near the uh, parents. Uh, our parents lived maybe uh, 20, 25 minutes apart, uh, mainly because we were in the Army. Bill was in the Army for two and a half years. And then we lived at home for about three years before we moved to Scotland. And then we spent three years there. When we came home, we spent only one year back in New Jersey, and then we came to California. So, but when we were at home for Thanksgivings and Christmases and Easter's, we would spend half the day with my parents and then spend half the day with their parents. And we ate two dinners. Now, I bet a lot of you do that because uh, parents want to share their children and their grandchildren, right? And a cocktail party ahead of time. Oh, yeah. So I don't know who drove home. <laughs> but by the time we got home on Thanksgivings, these were the Thanksgivings oh, in New Jersey. We were exhausted. Yeah. Um, but anyway... When we moved to Scotland, we had four little babies. The oldest was, what, six, and I think uh, Margie, who was our youngest, we only had four then. We have six now. Margie was 18 months old. And was it the first Thanksgiving or the second one? I think it was the second one, and I have to tell you something, the Scots don't... So of course. There is no Thanksgiving there. Well, you so? know, that, that didn't occur to us, did it? No, at the time. <laughs> we took the, the day off a couple of times and had a turkey. Yeah. The, um, obviously, Thanksgiving is an American holiday. However, guess what? What? One of our viewers on our video um, 
oh, last week sometime said that they do celebrate Thanksgiving where? Canada? Only on a different day in October. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I, I didn't realize that. Actually, we have a granddaughter that lives in Canada, and I should discuss that with her sometime. But anyway, this Thanksgiving probably was the second one because at some point we made a rash decision and decided to buy, what did they call it over there? Not a camper. It was a camper. Did they call it a camper? A caravan. They caravan. It was called a caravan. And it was one of these ones that had a curved back and you had to pull it. But, oh, we just, it was a whim on a weekend. Somebody had one that we had, remember? Yeah, yeah. And we went out with the four kids and we thought, oh, we'll travel all over Scotland and England with this and we'll have so much fun. We did have a, a station wagon, a Vauxhall it was called. So we had had it only a couple of weeks and we decided that on Thanksgiving day, we were going to take our caravan, cook a turkey dinner and have a Thanksgiving weekend in a campsite. I don't know what possessed us to do this because the weather was very, very cold to begin with. And sleety and snowy. Snowy on that day. And you found a campsite in, was it Southern Scotland yeah. somewhere? Mm -hmm. And we had to drive in the sleet and the snow so carefully for the first time, dragging this little caravan behind us. A big, a big uh, parking place with pl places for uh, hundreds and hundreds and playgrounds and, and canteens and us and one other person. There was nobody there. I don't remember it was, the it other was sleeting person. sleeting and snowy. But uh, prior to this, a couple of days before, we didn't have sleeping bags. We were really not well equipped. I sewed blankets together to make sleeping cozies for the kids. Um, the camper had oil heat. No. What was it? Can't, uh, uh, Bottled gas. Bottled gas or something. Had these cooking little, lights and heat. The, and these little things hung on the walls. So we we packed everything. Off we went in you the snow and the sleet. You cooked the turkey, too. We didn't I cook, cooked, try cooked to cook turkey. in the caravan. And, of course, no one else was celebrating uh, or, or even caravanning in November in Scotland. And we arrived at this <laughs> campsite, which I remember, as you say, is sort of a big parking lot, all alone. And it was nighttime, it was dark, and um, we, we parked, <laughs> could have parked anywhere, and we decided to get the lights on. Do you remember that? I remember it because the, uh, the, the uh, opening where you put your hose for the, for the tank, gas tank, was all sleeted up. It was frozen. So you couldn't get any gas into the place. So I got down on my back with a candle. <clears throat> trying to. Underneath it, on the copper pipe, melting. Ah, I can see the sweat coming on this thing. Anyway. Meanwhile, we, the kids were freezing. Oh, yeah. Because well, I was freezing. No, on he, no heat. In the mud. And they were hungry. And um, this was the beginning of the, the caravan Thanksgiving camping trip from you know where. From hell. <laughs> so finally, I don't know what, but we did get some light in these little kerosene lamps inside. We did get some heat. We heated it up and we decided we had to go to bed because it was too cold. It wasn't Thanksgiving yet. The next day was Thanksgiving. So we froze that night. We The kids kept coming in to us. I, I guess we were in a bed of some sort and we were all huddled together trying to stay warm. Woke up the next morning. Oh, and we had the bathroom was <clears throat> that little toilet. And we were not too familiar with how it worked. But we did say, now remember, everybody, there is a, a there was a, a private bathroom of some sort in this place that was open. I, I never saw another soul the whole time we were there. We said, just do wee wees. Uh, it, no one can do number two because we will go into the other place if anybody has to. 
So uh, that's the way the weekend went. The next day, we did manage to have the turkey. We did eat. Did we stay one more day? No, <laughs> we weren't going to go through another one of those cold nights. The night, by the way, started about 2.30 in the afternoon. So far oh. north of Scotland. It, it was. So underneath the john was this bucket. And the bucket was sort of full. So I pulled it out. And there was a place where you could go on the... On the inside the canteen where the where the toilets were where you could dump it and wash it out so i walked across the, i remember this the it still sticks in my head we were watching him as he in the slush uh, i remember it was got slightly to the steps icy. going down into the <laughs> dump site my feet went out the pot went up hold on to your hat boy here it comes <laughs> and guess what the kids had done their number two in there uh, afterward. I looked at Matthew's face. He was about, what, three or four. And, and his eyes were so big as he saw Moose Fall and this pot of the honey Stuff. pot, they called it in Ireland, I guess, just all over. It was a fiasco. Somehow we got them cleaned up. I tested the kids. Let's get in there. We're we're on our way. We're gonna leave now. And, and <laughs> I couldn't wait to get home and get in the shower. That that was our Scottish Thanksgiving camping trip. Now, what do you want to talk about? And I don't know whether we have another one to follow that or not. <laughs> do we? <laughs> uh, there were so many good ones, though. Well, of course, our children grew up we had two more children we have six now and we have had the most wonderful thanksgivings in california uh we had a home for many years up in big bear sometimes we'd be up in big bear and the fires and the soups and wonderful everybody would would help um where else did we have thanksgivings um trying to think Palm Desert, we had some Thanksgivings in Palm Desert. Um, but the main thing that we do now, which we will not be doing this Thanksgiving, um, this Thanksgiving, I think you all know, we have decided to stay here ourselves and isolate ourselves. And we'll probably Zoom with the other children. Of course, for my birthday, we did see a lot of uh, the grandchildren and most of our, oh, all of our children except Billy. I know my, my eye is, I don't know whether I'm old. laughing or I'm crying here. And um, we are going to cook a turkey. I'm going to make my great stuffing. The kids love my stuff. It's a little different. I'm going to give you the recipe. In fact, our next video, um, I'll probably do the cooking and then maybe freeze it because um, I can't wait until Thanksgiving Day to cook it for you because we won't be videoing Thanksgiving Day. But we've decided to... Um, make some mulled wine and put it on the back of the stove and um, Glühwein it's called in Germany and um, sit and enjoy the day maybe make a fire and talk to the children and try and make the best of it and I I certainly hope a lot of you will do that um, we'll miss the hikes we'll miss the football game Usually all the kids would be doing this. We'd be playing football in the backyard. And my, my heart would be in my mouth. Because, not because there were big kids playing out there in the backyard at full speed, touch football. The girls too. And the girls. And well, occasionally a five-year-old would wander out there. And oh my God, if they ever got trampled by one of those guys. Oh, they're all very competitive and, and the, yeah. the women in our family too. But that was always a big tradition, the football game. And then uh, the past 10 years or so, it's been the big hike. Um, they all come and um, assemble about 10 in the morning and off they go with all the dogs. And um, it's, a, it's a great day, yeah. a wonderful day to be thankful for. Um, well, a wonderful day to give thanks and be thankful for everything that we, we all have. Um, we used to make these little turkeys, and I'm going to show you this. And the kids would write on there what they were thankful for. 
All you do is trace your hand. Have the little children trace their hands. Those of you who are celebrating uh, with some of your grandchildren and have everybody on their own little turkey, You're supposed to have a little waddle here and we left the legs off, but have them write on there what they're thankful for and you can display it on a wall or something that day. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day, whether you're going to be uh, with friends or, or with family celebrating in a safe way or alone like Moose and I. And <laughs> very good. So until our next video, please subscribe and, and uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this and have all your cooking utensils and everything ready for the next video. And we will be doing some Thanksgiving. Gobble, cooking. gobble, gobble. I hope you've enjoyed our crazy chit-chatting. Um, but the beginning part was fun because you got to see, you got to meet the family, didn't you? You got to meet a lot of them with the birthday. So, goodbye for now. We love you all. God love bless you us all. Bye-bye now.